everyone welcome back to my channel so today's video is going to be an unboxing and a haul so recently I went to my local thrift store and I bought some books here um, and I also ordered my first order from Blackwell's which is here yeah, so I'm excited. I was gonna wait a little bit to open it, but I believe that there's some books in this package specifically that I bought so I can read for a book club. So I kind of had to get it open. So first I'm gonna start off with the books that I bought at the thrift store. This is the my local thrift store, which is the Valley Village. They have um, a section of secondhand books that people have donated and yeah one day I decided to stop by I had some clothes and some miscellaneous things that I wanted to donate and I also received a coupon for an extra I think 10 or 20 percent off which was pretty cool so um, at the Valley Village when you purchase four books you get the fifth book free so I bought five books and the five books are well the first book is the coincidence of coconut cake now i've never heard of this book but the reason i picked it up was because <laughs> coconut cake i recently actually made a coconut cake for my sister's baby shower and everyone really loved it and when I saw this cover and I saw it was coconut cake, I was like, oh, let me just grab it. So this story is set in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Chef Lou Johnson works tirelessly to build her beloved yet struggling restaurant Luella's into a success. She cheerfully balances business, friends, and fiancé until fate intervenes. She's just baked her fiancé a rich, delectable coconut cake, but when she drops by his apartment with the birthday, oops, sorry, with the birthday surprise, he, she discovers him in the buff with an intern. Sardonic British transplant Al writes pseudonymous scathing restaurant reviews for the local paper when a tip sends him to Luella's. Little does he know he's arrived on the worst day of the chef's life. The review practically writes itself. He, unleash he unleashes his worst. The day that Al's review runs, he meets Lou, drowning her sorrows at a pub, and the two strike up a conversation. Accepting the English man's challenge to prove there's more to the Milwaukee food scene than cheese and beer, Lou introduces her new friend to the city's best. It's only a matter of time before they fall in love. But when the truth comes out, will it be possible to overlook the past and savor a future together? Oh. Okay, I wonder what truth that is, but in any case, I guess it's kind of like a love story. It's a romance. Usually I don't like to read romances but recently I've been really enjoying books about food or with food inside so I'm curious to read this one. The next book that I purchased was Year of Wonders by Geraldine Brooks. When an infected bolt of cloth carries plague from London to an isolated mountain village, a housemaid named Anna Frith emerges as an unlikely heroine and healer. Through Anna's eyes, we follow the story of the plague year, 1666, as her fellow villagers make an extraordinary choice. Convinced by a visionary young minister, they elect to quarantine themselves within the village boundaries to arrest the spread of the disease. But as death reaches into every household, faith frays. When villagers turn from prayers to murderous witch hunting, Anna must confront the deaths of family, the disintegration of her community, and the lure, and the lure, <laughs> and the lure of illicit love. As she struggles to survive, a year of plague becomes instead a year of wonders. Okay, so yeah, so I pretty much picked this up because I was just like, oh, it's about a plague. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, I, I get that. <laughs> the next book that I picked up, and 
I've read books by Edwidge Dandycat before. This one, the one that I picked up here, is of The Farming of Bones by Edwidge Dandycat, and I'm really excited to read this. I have read, I think it was Breath, Eyes, Memory, and I can't remember what the book was about, but I remember really enjoying it because I did have to read it for school. But this one is set in 1937, a dangerous year in the Dominican Republic where Haitian laborers are useful rather than welcome, tolerated but not trusted. Amabel, a young Haitian woman orphaned at the age of eight, is, faithful, is a faithful servant to the young wife of an army colonel. Living in the household where, where the two women grew up together, Amabel's lover, Sebastian, is an itinerant sugarcane cutter a handsome man despite the scars on his face and the calluses on his hands. There are rumors that in other towns, Haitians are being persecuted, even killed, but there are always rumors. Amabel longs to become Sebastian's wife, to return with him to Haiti at the end of the cane season and begin a new life. Instead, the nationalist madness erupts and terror engulfs them. Yeah, I'm looking forward to reading this. Like I mentioned, I have read a uh, Breath Eyes Memory by Edwidge Jenny Cat, and I did like it. Uh, I did really enjoy it. Um, I'm also Haitian, so I'm really interested in reading more about Haitian culture and yeah, Haitian stories. So yeah, that is The Farming of Bones by Edwidge Jenny Cat. The next book that I picked up at the thrift store was The Memory Keeper's Daughter. This one, The Memory Keeper's Daughter by Kim Edwards. And I have heard about this book before. Um, I did actually have it um, in my Goodreads list. I have a ton of books on my Goodreads want to read list. But this one is set in 1964 when a blizzard forces Dr. David Henry to deliver his own twins. His son, born first, is perfectly healthy, but the doctor immediately recognizes that his daughter has Down syndrome. For motives he tells himself are good, he makes a split-second decision that will haunt all their lives forever. He asks his nurse Caroline, or Caroline to take the baby away to an institution. Instead, she disappears into another city to raise the child as her own. Yes, I'm looking forward to reading this. It's going to be a very sad story and sometimes I'm in the mood for like a little bit of something that would make me cry or something that's a little bit sad and I think this one will probably be that book. So yeah, that is The Memory Keeper's Daughter by Kim Edwards. The next book that I picked up, and I picked it up because I watch Kalila's channel. Um, I'll link it down below, but I really like her channel. Um, I love her reading vlogs and I watch her all the time. And she recently read Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honey, sorry, by Gail Honeyman. And she really enjoyed it. And I have seen this book I'm sure many of you have seen this book many times and it was really popular when it came out and people have been reading it and I do see it a lot at thrift stores and I never picked it up because I was just like ah, I don't want to read it it's fine but um Kalila was very insisting and you know she said she really enjoyed it and it made her cry another book that's probably gonna make me cry too and yeah I just decided to pick it up because of her and because I've seen it and I was like you know what let me just let me just get it so this one is meet Eleanor Oliphant she struggles with appropriate social skills and tends to say exactly what she's thinking nothing is missing in her carefully timetabled life where weekends mostly consist of frozen pizza vodka and phone chats with mummy but everything changes when Eleanor meets Raymond the bumbling IT guy from her office whose big heart will ultimately help Eleanor find the way to repair her own profoundly damaged one. So that is Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. So, on to the unboxing. This is the box here. Ooh. Oh, maybe, I'll, maybe I don't need scissors. Let's see.
and also I want to apologize for the background sound um, that's my AC going off all the time and yeah it's really hot out there Ooh. so this is it here okay. okay all five books are here okay I'm excited all right so okay so the first book I got The Death of a Bookseller um, by Alice Slater. This one I picked up because of Hannah May. I'm going to link her channel also down below because I really like her channel. I like the books that she reads or I'm curious to read more of the kind of books that she's reading, more like literary fiction and contemporary. And this was one of the books that she read and I believe that she liked it. Um, if she didn't like it, I'm pretty sure I just picked it up because the cover was so cool. This is the UK version of the cover. Let me, let me read the synopsis. So, would you kill for a good story? Roach, bookseller, loner, and true crime fanatic, has no interest in making friends. She has all the company she needs in her serial killer books, murder, podcasts, and her pet snail bleep. That is until Laura joins the bookshop. With her cute literary tote bags and sunny smile, she's everyone's favorite bookseller. But beneath the shiny veneer, Roach senses a darkness within Laura, the same darkness Roach po possesses. And as curiosity blooms into morbid obsession, Roach becomes determined to be part of Laura's story, whether Laura wants her in it or not. So yeah, that sounds interesting. This is probably a book I'll probably leave uh, for around like Halloween time. Um, the cover is really cool. It's like green and pink and there's like a little bit of like blood there. So yeah, that is Death of a Bookseller by Alice Slater. The next book that I got. I'll go for my Let me get this one because I think we're going to Okay. Okay. This is so cute actually. This one, I believe I want to say it's a middle grade and it is The Haunting of Aveline or Aveline Jones by Phil Hicks. And I've been wanting to read, I've been curious to read this book since like last year, just because like the cover firstly is all the fall vibes on this cover. You got orange, you got black, you got the leaves. She looks like she's in the forest. Oh, there's like a scarecrow with like a pumpkin head there. So yeah, this, this book is, it's cute. Oh my gosh. There's like little pictures. Oh my gosh. There's like pictures. I'm an adult excited for a picture book. That's so cute. But yeah, so I'll read the synopsis. Turn on your torches and join, and join Aveline Jones. Aveline or Aveline loves reading ghost stories, so a dreary half-term becomes much more exciting when she discovers a spooky old book. Not only are the stories spine-tingling, but it belonged to a girl called Primrose Pemberthy, who vanished mysteriously, never to be seen again. Intrigued, Aveline decides to investigate Primrose's disappearance with some help from her new friend Harold. Now someone or something is stirring and it is looking for Aveline. Okay, yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited to read it. It's a middle grade, it's set in the fall time. It gives me a little bit of that fall vibes. It's not too scary, you know, if I need a little bit of like light horror, very light horror, then I think this will be a good one to read. And that is Aveline, or The Haunting of Aveline Jones by Phil Hicks. The next book, this one. Ooh, okay, I forgot I got this one. This one is Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. And I literally got it because of the cover. I saw the American cover and I thought, oh, you know, it's, you know, it's not that great. And then I saw this cover and I was like, okay, I need to get this one. But the story is very intriguing as well. And I'm excited to read this book. 
So when Leah finally returns after a deep sea mission that ended in catastrophe, her wife Mary knows that something is wrong. Whatever happened in that vessel stranded on the ocean floor, Leah has carried part of it with her onto dry land and into their home. As Miri searches for answers to her wife's altered state, she must face the possibility that the woman she loves is slipping from her grasp. That is Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. The next book that I bought. Oh yes. <laughs> I'm excited. They're so cute. Like these books are so little and cute. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let me stop. The next book that I got was Brown Girls by Daphne Palassi and Triads. And Triads, I'm sorry, I should have checked how to say the last name. Um, but Brown Girls, so I'll read the synopsis. Brown Girls dives deep into the lives of a, of a group of young women of color growing up in Queens, New York. Here, streets echo with, with many languages, subways rumble above dollar stores, and the brim and the Bernice scent of the ocean wafts in from Rockaway Beach. Here, girls like Nadira, Gabby, Naz, Trish, Angelique, and many others struggle to reconcile their different immigrant backgrounds with the American culture they come of age in. Here, they become friends for life, or so they vow. Yeah, I'm excited to read this. So this is another one that I was excited to read and that I had on, that I put on my TBR as soon as I heard about it. But it's a different cover in the US. And I'll put the cover here in case you want to see. Um, it's a different cover in Canada, the US, or in North America. And when I saw this cover, I was like, yeah, I, I'm going to get this cover instead so yes i'm excited to read this book as well and that's brown girls by daphne palassi andre i'm sorry <laughs> and the last book that i bought ooh, okay unsettled ground by claire fuller Ginny and julius have always been different from other people at 51 years old the twins still live with their mother dot in her isolated ramshackle cottage making music and growing and sometimes killing everything they need for sustenance but when dot dies suddenly threats to their livelihood start raining down desperate to preserve their small sanctuary against the perils of the outside world Ginny and julius find themselves pushed further to the margins as their mother's secrets begin to unravel putting everything they thought they knew about their lives at stake. And that's Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller. Again, another cover in North America that's very different. And when I saw this one, I was like, yeah, I want this one. Another book that I'm looking forward to reading during the fall season and a perfect read for Halloween. Look how cute this is. Like they're all equal. Is it like a UK thing? Like are they all the same size? And they're all the UK editions, I believe. I don't know if this one is exactly the UK edition, but I couldn't find it anywhere in um, Canada or like I couldn't find it at Indigo. And the only place I could find it was at Blackwell. So that's why I bought it. And I was really interested in reading it. I also have a book club that I'm reading it for. So I'm really looking forward to reading that and everything else that's so cute in this pile. Look at all these books, look. So these are all the new books that I purchased recently and um, I know everyone's talking about going on a book buying ban. I keep telling myself, yeah, I should go on a book buying ban. It never works. So, so that's it. That is my, the books that I purchased recently and that was my unboxing for today. Let me know down below if there are any books from my stack of new books here that you have read or that you're looking forward to read or that I should be excited to read. Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye!